which means I'll be president next year. Um, okay, that's enough about me. Next slide. <laughs> the important okay. good stuff. Um, today we're going to go over, um, I just wanted to put a little agenda together. Just, um, I hope this is a little more conversational than anything else, but I wanted to give you some information about connecting with employers. Um, so we'll spend about 20 minutes talking about expressing value, um, something I like to call side doors, um, getting into an employer, um, leveraging associations um, such as the Society for Human Resource Management, but there are others as well. Um, talk a little bit about networking with employers, and then I wanted to give you an example of a network, a good networking event that I recently went to to kind of um, give you some ideas about how that might be structured, and then we'll try to um, do some questions as well. Okay, so next slide, Ed, yeah. um, just a second. I'm getting a lot of background feedback noise. Okay. So I'm wondering if everyone online, if you could mute your microphones during the presentation. I think that might take care of it. Okay, great. Okay, Thank you. great. Um, so I talk, uh, this slide I called Employers Connecting With You. Um, essentially what employers are looking for is what value can you provide? So when you're looking at connecting with employers, you really want to think about what value can I provide to that employer to encourage them to want to connect with us as an organization as a source of talent for them. Um, so one, one thing that I, I see people kind of missing out on is um, providing numbers. Numbers do count in the world of employers, um, especially as people are putting together things like diversity and inclusion plans. Um, more specifically, um, the Office of Federal Contractor Compliance Programs, OFCCP, if you are a federal contractor in today's world, the OFCCP has lots of rules around how you conduct yourself and uh, how you recruit your uh, workforce. Um, and they're very strong on having a robust diversity and inclusion plan. And more and more, we're seeing new, new rules. Um, and it's at, especially beginning this year, at March 24th, actually, is uh, kind of a line in the sand as far as new rules that they're implementing um, going 2014 and more aggressively in 2015, um, where they're going to require more and more outreach activities from employers. Um, specifically, they're going to be looking for activity um, as it relates to veterans and um, people with disabilities, which they are now calling individuals with disabilities. Um, so there is a definite push amongst um, federal contractors to begin to think about better um, and deeper ways that they can start connecting with sources um, that will give them those populations as well as others. So getting back to the numbers, it's important for you when you're thinking about connecting with employers to have information about the demographics as they relate to your program, as they relate to your college, um, so that you can then provide them and say, you know, yes, we have a healthy, you know, diverse city plan, um, Mr. Federal Contractor, and, you know, here's, here's kind of where our students are coming from. Or if you have a strong, you know, if you, you have some focus, and I know uh, many of your programs do have a focus on attracting veterans into your program, you can specifically say, um, this is the number of veterans we currently have in our program. These are our targets um, to include veterans as part of our training program, so that they know that you are now becoming a pipeline for these sources of um, talent out there. So it's important to have those numbers available, develop that little handout, um, you know, to expressing some of your values, some of the things that you, you're doing within your program, how you're readying your employees, or excuse me, your, your students for um, the world of work. Um, and then you also want to have definitely those numbers prominently listed um, to tell your story. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and then a little bit about finding federal contractors. I thought it might be helpful to provide the link that's on there. Um, I believe it's a live link, so you can click on it. And it will take you actually to, and I don't want to click on it now because I don't want to lose you all, <laughs> but um, it will actually connect you to the eVerify um, page. So federal contractors are strongly encouraged to use eVerify as part of their I-9 process, which essentially is the process that allows the federal government to know that your employees are um, here, are working in the United States legally. So consequently, um, that E-Verify uh, gives you an opportunity to plug in there your, um, you know, if you're looking for a specific employer, it will, you know, it has a box for that. But you can do 
Um, you can pull a larger listing by putting in the, the weather. I think one of the boxes asks you, are you looking for federal contractors, yes or no? You would say yes. And then it allows you to put in a zip code. So you would plug in a zip code in there, and it would pull up all the federal contractors that are um, in, you know, in that zip code area that are federal contract, uh, all the employers that are federal contractors. Not all of them are going to be healthcare, not all of them are going to be associated for what you need, but it's definitely a list that I would pull um, if I were looking to connect with employers so I could see like who falls under those OFCCP rules. Um, many hospital and med medical um, play, you know, organizations fall under OFCCP because they are receiving federal money in the form of Medicaid and so forth. But you want to kind of define that for yourself so that you know how then to approach the employer and have your members ready and know. I would also become familiar um, with some of those new rules that are being enacted by the OFCCP. There's information kind of everywhere right now about that. Um, in addition, I would start thinking about joining on uh, diversity employment groups. I'm sorry, I put joint diversity employment groups on there, but what I really meant was joining diversity employment groups. Um, I, there's one for um, Puget Sound. They're very active, the Puget Sound Diversity Employment Network. They actually have uh, meetings monthly, um, and essentially during those meetings, they bring employers together with job seekers, and they'll have something called a live resume. Um, presentation where people who are interested in working can come, they can talk about themselves, they can bring their resume, they can mingle with some of the employers. There's usually some presentation that the employers will find um, interesting. Um, that I would strongly recommend um, if you can to join that organization. There's a LinkedIn group that you can join. Um, the woman that heads it is Tammy Petrie and she is very, very dedicated to one of the, and Margaret um, can attest to this, I mean, she's extremely dedicated to diversity. And she's um, very involved with, uh, on the state level, um, kind of workforce uh, integration with employers. So she's, um, she's, a, she's a great person to know. That's a, a good group to be a part of. Um, it's a good group to message to as you have events, as you have networking things. Um, you can post things on that LinkedIn group. Um, there, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example of how you can kind of network with employers. Their next meeting is actually at Northwest Hostel um, here in the north end of Seattle. And so you know that the Northwest Hospital folks are going to be there. And, you know, so it's a great opportunity to kind of introduce yourself to those folks and, and um, start to mingle with them and network with them. So I, I strongly encourage not just this diversity group, but there, there are others. Um, that you could be a part of and start messaging out to through LinkedIn or, um, you know, through the different events that they have um, that come across, that you can come across. Um, next slide, Pam. Thank you. Um, side doors. So everybody wants to get to an employer through the front door, <laughs> which is um, applying for jobs through the, um, through the applicant tracking system. You're going to the website and applying for jobs, and that's a wonderful way to go. Um, I don't discourage it, but what people don't um, kind of think about are some of the side doors, some of the other ways that you can encourage your students to um, be begin to interact with employers in a way that then encourages them to, you know, first of all, get to know an employer, um, you know, I have situations here where people are always approaching me and saying, I really want to work for PATH, you have an amazing mission. Um, agreed, yes we do. Do Can you really work for a nonprofit though? Are you thinking about like all the challenges that come with that and that come with working for a global organization? Um, you know, working um, through a temper, as a temporary is a great way if you can afford to do so. Um, there's that large caveat, but if you can afford to do it, um, temp hiring is a great way to come into an organization. And the reason for that is sometimes employers, because of the way that they are funded, can't afford to have a full-time role in that moment. So in a particular quarter, in a particular year or half year, they may not be able to afford having a full-time employee role, um, primarily because there's lots of things associated with that, right? You want to make sure that that role will be funded for years to come. You want to be able to uh, make sure that you can provide benefits to that role. So there's a lot of involved in that. However, it doesn't mean the work goes away, right? So many times what employers will do is hire temps. And sometimes a temp isn't a week or two. We're talking several months worth of temping. Um, 
And so that is a great way for people to kind of start getting introduced to employers. And here's where the numbers, again, um, pan out. Uh, and I'll, I'm giving you an example of costs associated with contingent staffing um, that I'm familiar with. Um, you know, you're going to have con uh, staffing agencies that will tell you it's a little different, but primarily I've seen this. Um, so usually if somebody finds a temp for me, so if I go out to a temp agency and ask that temp agency to help me with a, uh, to find a, a fill a temp role, they will upcharge me 60%, which means that whatever that person makes, so let's say they make $20 an hour, it's $20 plus 60%. That is how much is coming out of my pocket as an employer to pay for that person to come on board. So um, if I find that person, so for instance, um, I'll give you an example. So here at PATH, we have something called Community Coffees, and um, we invite the public in, and you know, we have to, you know, we talk about our work, and then we give people an opportunity to talk to recruiters. And there are many times when I'll get um, people that are just coming out of, you know, a program out of college or something that say, hey, I'd really like to come in, and, you know, there's no internships available, but can I, um, can, you know, can I work with you somehow? And I will tell them, you know, well, if you are open to temporary, a temporary role, you know, leave your resume with me, let me know about it. And we are internally building kind of a small database in as much as we can, um, trying to build a small database of people that we know, they're interested, they really are committed to our mission, and they want to, you know, they want to work for us and they're available, and then we have, you know, some information as far as their skills and so forth. And so when we come across a temp role, then we send it out to a distribution list of people that have indicated they are interested, and we say, you know, hey, this is a temporary role, here's kind of a little bit about it. If you're still interested, let us know. And then we've created kind of our own internal pipeline of temporary um, folks, and it reduces our cost by 30%. So instead of paying $20 plus 60%, I'm now paying $20 plus 30%. So there's value there. Um, larger organizations, I will tell you, usually do have a very kind of tight system around contingent staffing. But it doesn't hurt that when you are connecting with employers that you talk about temp staffing. You can say, do you have someone in charge of contingent staffing? I know, for instance, Swedish Medical has someone that's in charge of contingent staffing um, because they use it for nursing all the time. So you might want to introduce the idea of, well, hey, you know, we have a pipeline of people that might be good for, you know, a role in your IT area. Um, you know, it, they may or may not, but it's great to have that conversation and get them started thinking about it um, because then you become a pipeline for them of, again, talent for um, temporary. And they may reach out to you for temporary roles. So um, I would definitely consider that side door of um, temporary hiring needs. And what, and what happens many times with temporary is they will start out temporary, you know, as a, in a temporary role. And, you know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they find they don't like working for that organization and they move on. Sometimes they say, hey, I love this place. And if you have, a, you know, and then they get to see the full-time roles first. Um, they get to interact with hiring managers. They get to interact with coworkers. So people start to say, hey, she was really great. Um, you know, can you bring her back for another temp, or can you bring her, you know, we've got this full time role, have you told her about it? You know, so it just creates that familiarity with that particular person so they know, you know, that there might be someone they want to work with long term. So it's a great kind of entryway. Um, you can look for people who are in charge of contingent staffing through LinkedIn if you plug that in as a keyword in your, uh, if you try to advance search um, on LinkedIn um, and you hit there's like three buttons if you want to connect with people that are first connection, second connection, and third connection. And interestingly enough, LinkedIn has defaulted to not click that third button. That's the third level of, um, you know, it means that you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody kind of thing because they want you to buy their product. So click it when you're doing an advanced search and plug in contingent staffing. And plug and and go to the you know go to the healthcare industry or plug in healthcare or something along those lines. Um, those are you know a great way to search for people that are in charge of contingent staffing and try to connect with them and express your, again express your value. Um, why you think you know that that you know talk can you talk to me and don't you know try to respect their time and say hey do you have ten minutes that we could just talk you know we're part of you know about you know we're part of this college and we're doing this great stuff and we've got lots of veterans I mean talk about those value ads. Um, when you're trying to introduce yourself. Um, connecting with temporary agencies. So I know of one. Um, I, um, 
called Scribes Stat, and they turned into Essia Health. And you guys may be familiar with them. I'm not sure. Um, Pam, do you, is, are you familiar with them by any chance? Pam? I'm not. Sorry, I was unmuting okay. myself. No, 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 no problem. No problem. Um, okay, so Scribe Stat um, used to they uh, kind of uh, their focus was really trans kind of transcription, you know, medical transcription. But they moved into um, working, you know, having people working on electronic medical records. And so they are essentially a sort of a temp agency. They work on contracts, essentially. So they have contracts with healthcare agencies kind of throughout, you know, in different areas. Um, and when I was working, I don't know if Pam mentioned it, but I used to work at Bellevue College in, in your same role um, in general placement. And um, a lot of the students that I used to work with, I would refer them over there if they were open to kind of temporals and kind of getting their feet wet and getting to learn more about the industry. Um, and SEA Health then takes, you know, they apply, they apply, you know, just like they would kind of a regular role. Um, they go through their whole process, but SEA Health essentially will then place them inside of different healthcare facilities to work on electronic medical records. Um, and, uh, in, and so it's kind of a win-win because they're, in the meantime, getting that experience. Um, they're being paid for it and they're getting some, you know, they're starting to get to know internally some of these organizations. And so it's an opportunity for them, again, to kind of network with, the pe with people, figure out, again, do they want to work there really or not, um, and kind of work their way into an organization. Um, there's pros and cons with that, of course. You know, I'm, I'm, as much as I think it's a great opportunity, I think people need to be aware that, you know, they're making their money off of you. And so um, it, with any temp agency, it's kind of that way. You saw what the markups are. So it, it, there's a pros and cons to that. If people are really kind of against that, then I totally respect it. But at the same time, it's an opportunity to kind of get in, get your feet wet, get to know organizations, and actually do the work. Um, and so I, I, you know, I say proceed with caution, <laughs> but I would definitely put that out there as an idea for getting some, you know, placing some of your students somewhere where they can get more experience that is not necessarily an internship, that is an actual paid job that will kind of move them forward. And I've seen some of our students in the past do that and with some success. Um, okay, next slide. Leveraging associations. So, um, Professional associations are a great way to network with employers, um, primarily because most professional associations have some level of community involvement that they want to be a part of. Um, and, and, and some of them have, you know, very directly workforce readiness kind of initiatives. Um, certainly um, with, uh, with SHRM, Seattle SHRM, we definitely have a workforce readiness initiative, you know, this year. Um, the way I would approach it is I would definitely go through the board. So most um, associations have chapters, um, or you can go through the national association, they may refer you. But most associations um, have their boards listed, the actual people that are on the board. Um, and I would try to target, you know, if not the president, I would try to target someone who is their maybe an outreach person. Um, sometimes they more directly call them community involvement. Um, I know with SHRM, with the Society of Human Resource Management, we at our SHRM chapter have a workforce readiness director. So we have somebody who that's, that's what they're doing. They're trying to help us, you know, they're trying to coordinate initiatives that have to do with workforce readiness. So um, the board is a great place to kind of start. Um, and then you, you really need to have a vision. You really need to, don't make the board, don't make that person think it all up for you. You really need to have a vision of how you see this working. Um, are you looking, you know, and be specific. Are you looking for networking events? Are you looking for their members to be um, involved in networking events that you want to put on? Are you looking for their members to be involved in a sh job shadow program? Um, if so, what is that going to look like? Um, how do you see that working? Um, and get their input. Well, here's our vision, but, you know, can you tell me, do you think this would work? You know, what do you think? Um, is this something you think your members would be interested in doing? You know, that kind of thing. Um, you want to talk about, you know, if, if it's internships you're looking for, then be specific. We're looking for internships in this area to last this long. Um, and we would really like your, your, you know, your members to be involved. If you would like to just advertise on their, you know, maybe 
uh, have an announcement at one of their chapter meetings. You know, maybe say, is, would it be possible for me to come in at a chapter meeting and you know do a five-minute announcement? Would it be okay if I um, put something on your website? You know, throw ideas at them and be, try to be as specific as you can about like what your vision is interacting with them so that the work is done because a lot I know with my board it's a voluntary gig <laughs> it's for a nonprofit professional association and it's voluntary and so um, I have my day job and my family and then I have the Al Sharm that I'm, I'm working with so when someone approaches me with an idea if it's fully formulated then I can better help them I can better either direct them or give some input and say, well, you know, that might not work, but let me tell you what what might what I've seen work in the past, or how we might scope that, um, and and that usually is, you know, you know, pretty successful. I've had colleges uh, reach out to me, you know, for for that, and and it's it's worked because then we can leverage our membership and we can be specific with them about how they can be involved and the value that they bring, you know, and usually they're they're excited about um, doing something. So um, just some things to think about. And then I've listed a couple of associations that you might want to think about. So there is a Washington Healthcare Human Resources Association. These people are very, uh, very much just all healthcare. It's not just HR from everywhere. Um, so that's a good association to kind of reach out to. I would start maybe at the president level. Um, I'm not sure that they have a workforce readiness person. But I would go to their website um, and I would direct my inquiries to the president and see, um, and again, you know, being kind of, um, you know, direct in how you want to do it. And since most of the colleges are in Washington um, in, in this particular, on this particular grant, then maybe you want to kind of do a, a, a group plan. I'm not sure, but that is definitely some place I would, I would go. Um, again, SHRM chapters, um, we have SHRM chapters throughout Washington State um, in different areas. So I, you can go on to the SHRM uh, website and check out, you know, what chapter is closest to you and maybe start connecting there. Um, you have your Washington State Hospital Associations, Washington State Psychological Association. Um, I think when I was on that Washington State Psychological Association, their next chapter meeting was something around, um, uh, you know, all the changes in healthcare. So, I mean, this is, this is a great opportunity for kind of you folks to be involved in, and um, connect with them um, because you have, men, you know, um, you know, mental health facilities as well are going to, you know, need electronic medical records. They need that same kind of support as well. And uh, many times are kind of neglected out of the healthcare schema. Um, and I know that the governor has um, some very uh, direct ways in which he wants to have, you know, them more included in the conversations around healthcare. Um, there's the Washington Association of Naturopathic Physicians, there's the American Academy of Pediatrics, so Washington State Chapter. I mean, there's just lots of professional associations to reach out to and try to connect with. Um, next slide. Um, networking with employers. So um, I've kind of talked about this also, but, uh, you know, throughout our conversation here today, but um, I can't stress enough going to events. I know it's a drag sometimes because you just don't want to. But going to events does have value. Um, you want to go to events where employers are. You want to um, connect with them. You want to put on your best face and, you know, and, and just say, you know, start having conversations and, and kind of connecting with people. Um, there's, all, there's OFCCP, so the Office of Civil Contract Compliance Programs are having lots of education events right now because they are having some rule changes. And so um, I would put myself there. Um, first of all, you kind of do want to get to know some of those rules so that you're just informed. Um, but second to that, these are the employers that have that interest, that are going to be recruiting for veterans that are going to be returning with individuals with disabilities. And so this is the audience that's going to be most receptive about, you know, to talking to about like, hey, how can we create those pipelines? How can we make those connections? So um, I would definitely be doing some of that. So if you, if you Google it, they're kind of all over the place. I would just kind of put uh, OFCCP, new rules. I would just do some digging there. Um, and the Department of Labor uh, OFCCP site also, I think, lists like the events that are coming up. Um, SHRM chapter event. So um, I know at Seattle SHRM, um, you do not need to be a member to come to our chapter meeting. Um, so you, you pay a non-member rate, but you can come to the meetings, absolutely. Um, that's a great place also to kind of mix in with some employers. You're going to get employers from all over the place. But 
um, you know, within them, there may be some that, you know, you want to start kind of focusing on. Um, and then uh, and there's a link there. That link will take you to the page where it will show you where the chapters are within the state of Washington. Um, career fairs. So career fairs are a great place to go to, especially those geared to veterans, if you have veterans in your current training population population. Um, the reason for that, what I would do if I were, if I were you folks is I, I know some of you go to these events to, to recruit students, but what I would do is when they go out to those events to recruit students, I would be there as well to um, be connecting with the employers in the career fair. So you kind of make the rounds, you introduce yourself, you say, hey, you know, we're We've got this training program, and these are, you know, kind of express the value of the program and what it's doing, and then have your demographic information handy um, and, you know, talk about that and say, hey, we have, you know, veterans in our program that would really like to maybe work with you, Mr. Employer. Um, I know JBLM is having a career fair coming up. Um, it's through ACAP. Uh, which is the Army Alumni something, 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 and I forget, so I'm, excuse me for that. But um, the JBLM, uh, they have two. They had one in the fall. It was huge. And they have one um, coming up, I think, in April. Um, but essentially, those kind, there's another one that's going on in Marysville. I think it's targeting more um, of the uh, um, National Guard um, but uh, and is low cost. I know Hire America's Heroes has that enormous one. Um, I have really uh, mixed feelings on those. I think they're a little too big and they're super expensive. Uh, I know for us at PATH, there's no way we could afford going there. So what happens when you go to like, when you only target super ginormous um, uh, conferences and events like that, like a giant career fair, is that um, when you see how much it costs for employers to sign up for those, you kind of automatically exclude your smaller employers. So your smaller clinics, your smaller, um, your mental health facilities, publicly funded programs, I mean, they just get thrown out because they can't afford it. You know, nonprofits, um, speaking from personal experience, I can tell you that, we just can't afford it. Um, and so we'll look for smaller events that maybe we can be more impactful. So um, bear that in mind when you're, um, when you're kind of choosing events to, to kind of place yourself in. Um, Heroes to Hire is, uh, and I've got the website there, h2h.job. Um, I connected with them um, kind of last year. Uh, they're a great uh, organization. I mean, they're, they're, it's a great place for you to kind of send your, your veterans to look for work. Um, they have a person that is in charge of kind of working with veterans to get them, you know, in, into jobs. So they're doing some outreach to employers. Um, I have the current representative on one of my um, mailing lists so that I be sure to send him a lot of my jobs. Um, so this is a great connection for you, a community connection that you can make um, for your students. Um, and then I talk about looking for low cost and free events for employers to capture the smaller ones. You don't want to miss out on those because those may be a, a point of success for you. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about creating a networking event and inviting uh, employers. I know I'm going over time, Pam, so I'm sorry about that. Um, can we just go? I'll make it quick. The next one. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. This is great information. Okay, great. Um, so um, follow up, follow up, follow up. So I can't tell you the number of times I go to events and I meet people and I meet employers and I meet candidates that are ready to come on, you know, that are super excited about PATH. And then I tell them, um, well, hey, send me your resume or, you know, I'll link up with me on LinkedIn or, you know, I'll tell them to connect with me and they never do it. They just don't follow up. And so where I've had, where, um, you know, colleges have kind of success and organizations have success with us are those that follow up in a nice way, you know, kind of, hey, it was great to meet you. You know, I really, really look forward to maybe, you know, continuing our conversation. Um, you know, here's my contact information. Understand that we're very busy in the recruiting world. Um, and so just because we don't get back to you right away doesn't mean there isn't interest there. Um, so just, you know, if, if it doesn't work the first time, hey, you know, follow up like a month later and just, you know, oh, you know, I know you're busy. I just, you know, want to follow up with you. But definitely follow up. And I would say that for your students as well. Tell them to follow up. Um, okay, next slide. I wanted to give you an example of a networking event that I went to um, recently that I thought was pretty successful from an employer standpoint. So um, the college reached out to me and they invited me to a networking event, and so I went. Um, the the first circle there on the left is a represents 
sorry, I'm not an artist. Uh, clip art, clip art, clip art. Um, the first one represents kind of what they were doing with the students. So they invited employers and then they brought their students in to have a networking event. And what they did first was they kind of corralled the students away from the employers and they gave them kind of a 10, 15 minute prep session on here are the goals you have with the employers, here's what you should be doing, here's, you know, they, so they gave them some tips and advice on the best way to kind of be approaching and talking to employers and so forth. Um, on the right, there, there we are, the employers. And so we were there and, you know, we were, you know, networking with other employers and they had discussions and, you know, we're, so we're drinking our coffee and we're talking to other employers, which is, you know, it's always good for us because that's how we share ideas, right? So well, we're networking with other employers. So we did that, each did that for about 10, 15 minutes. And then they brought us together into one room for like another, I want to say it was like an hour event. So I think we had like maybe 20 minutes of kind of being by ourselves and then um, we had like another hour, an hour and a half of us being together. Um, you know, they brought us into the room, they introduced it, you know, each employer introduced themselves for whatever, two minutes. And then we all had little, uh, we stood at like little cocktail table type of things, which, you know, it's good and not good, but whatever. We had these little cocktail tables. So if we wanted to have some, um, you know, employer in, you know, information or sheets, we could have them. And then the students were there and they just started mingling with the employers, you know, and then the members of the staff of the college, their job was really just to walk through, make sure everybody was talking to everybody, kind of be uh, like a good host at a party, right? Nobody stands by themselves, nobody's off onto a wall. They're just kind of, cir you know, circulating and making sure everybody's meeting everybody else. Um, it was, I think, one of the better events I've been to um, because it was organized, it was clear why we were there. Um, you know, we had, there was a time limit around it so it wasn't too long and exhausting. And, um, you know, we got refreshments and, and I, I, you know, I got to meet some great students and we had really nice conversations and, you know, and then it was like, thank you, thank you, and then we all left, you know. And then I encouraged the students, you know, the ones that I wanted, you know, that, that well, all of the students, I give them a little test and I tell them, you know, go, well, email me your, if you're interested in, you know, temporals or, you know, why don't you email me your resume? And then those people that follow up, I know those people are really interested and everybody else kind of falls away, right? So, um, again, we come back to the importance of follow-up. So, um, but that was, that's an example of a networking event that I thought was pretty successful. So, um, great. Now we can get to questions. What questions do you have? Thank you so much, Yvette. Does anyone have any questions? Just remember to unmute yourself. Yvette, this is Shannon Magnuson. That was an excellent presentation and gave us some great ideas. Really appreciate you taking the time. I do have, I, and one of your ideas with I had not thought of before is in connecting with um, the person with various organizations who's involved with contingent staffing and was wondering if you even had some additional suggestions in terms of um, proposing internships. Um, I'm wondering if proposing starting off as job shadows one day, feel us out and then move into internships. Have you had any experience or any additional tips in that area? Um, well, I think Pam and I are talking about having another presentation around internships. I do have kind of a lot of ideas around that. Um, I, will t I will tell you that um, you're better off targeting your conversation. So I wouldn't start out with internships. I would go, if you're going to talk to somebody who's in charge of continued staffing, talk to them about mm -hmm. contingent staffing. Especially in larger organizations, many times those jobs are separated, so the person that does contingent staffing may not be the person that's in charge of internships. Mm -hmm. And so what will happen is if you begin to have a conversation, if you're having a, if you're talking to a contingent staffing person inside of HR and you start to bring in internships, they're going to refer you to somebody else and they're going to kind of tune you out, right? Okay. So I would target my conversations. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sure, you're welcome. Thanks, Shannon. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have any questions? Mm -hmm. 
Yvette, this is Margaret. Thank you so much for taking time out of your, I know, incredibly busy day. To <laughs> It was terrific information. Oh, you're welcome. I was happy to do it. I'm glad I was able to, you know, hope, I hope it was helpful and I, I hope people got something out of it. I see uh, messages in the chat pane. Thank you for the great information from Adriana. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yvette. Okay, so I'm going to cut out now. Okay, so um, it was great to uh, to present to you. Thanks for inviting me, and I'll uh, and maybe we'll do this again soon. Okay, yeah, I'll follow Thanks. up with you later. Okay, thank Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. -bye. Okay, so I'm going to switch us back to our agenda. Pam, if I can just give a shout out, this is Shannon. She was excellent, so thank you for arranging having her come. I'm just yes, super actually, ideas. you can thank Margaret, too. Oh, great. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, wasn't she great? Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I've been here about four months or a little over four months now, and I just wanted to briefly check back in with you all to kind of clarify my role on the grant and how I might support you. Um, so I put together a little uh, file here. Let me see if I can pull that out. There we go. <laughs> So essentially what I did here is I just um, broke out my position into these four buckets, which are really um, outreach and recruiting, student services, internships and employment, and then member college support. Um, and I broke down kind of the different roles, the different responsibilities in my role, and then some examples of how I'm doing each of those. Um, and I'm not going to go through all of this right now, but I will share this file with you and I want to just, you know, open it up to answer any questions you might have. Um, okay, so I'll just briefly summarize. Um, so essentially, my role is to provide leadership and support um, to the, all of you um, in outreach and recruiting, student services, internships, and employment, um, and then also to be a resource for you um, to check in regularly if um, you have any questions, um, if you're having a particular challenge in any of these areas that you're wanting to get some coaching or resources um, or best practices from. Um, I'm also doing a lot of um, outreach to employers, so I'm going out to various events uh, regionally and nationally um, and representing the whole consortium, um, letting people know about our program at all the colleges um, and also you know, trying to find out any information I can about um, jobs, job opportunities or internships, um, any kind of recruiting or hiring events that are happening. Um, so I've been periodically, you know, touching base with all of you and sending out um, information as it becomes available and then responding to any requests that I get from you. Um, just to give you a few examples, so under outreach and recruiting, um, so hopefully I'll leave the consortium brochure. 
Um, also, I represented the consortium at the HIMSS National Conference, and I just got back from the Rural Health Conference. Um, also, I we presented um, at WorkSource to over 60 people last week. Um, and so just to give you an example of one of the things I can do is I put together a PowerPoint presentation um, talking about careers in health IT, talking about industry trends, and the consortium as a whole. And then I, um, Esther and Shannon presented more specifically on Bellevue's programs. And this was at the work source um, in Mount Lake Terrace, where we had over 60 participants. Um, and I'll also be presenting with um, Patricia at JDLM next week. Um, and again, we'll be talking about all of the consortium programs. Um, so I'll just pause. Um, do you guys have any questions for me, or is there anything specifically you'd like more clarification on? Okay. Hopefully you're all still there. Let's see. I'm not looking at the check chat box here. Okay. Thank you, Natalie. Um, Adriana asks, can you give us examples of what resources you can provide for us? Um, okay, well, it's really um, the resources that I can provide are um, really in direct response to whatever kinds of issues or challenges are coming up for you, um, and also resources that are um, around the grant goals, such as veteran resources or the resources for the TAA and work source. Um, and then, you know, Adriana, you recently asked me for some information about uh, working with ESL students. So um, I sent you a couple of resources, and I'm trying to track down some more information on that as well. Um, did that answer your question? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. I was just wondering, for example, if the resources were more like articles and articles and websites, or if the resources, I didn't know how detailed they could be, if they could be something like actual, like something like a study skill because of all the student success aspects, if that was also part of your role, if I said something like, I need more help with time management or something, as just as an example. If you could look up an actual like worksheet to use with students, like those types of things, or if that's too detailed or not in line, kind of thing. Um, I can certainly help you look for those kinds of resources. Um, I'm not sure as far as the student work, student coaching, and working specifically with the students. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure, you know, that I'm just going to have that information any more than you do. But mm -hmm. I will definitely try to find resources or um, such as someone who can maybe come and speak to our group at the monthly meeting who's more of an expert in that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. I just want to know what kind of topics to ask about, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Well, I'm sure it's going to be different for everyone. Um, but, yeah, I definitely want you to ask me and come to me if you're having challenges. Um, and also, you know, one of the um, services that I can provide is coaching, individual coaching. Um, so if you're just feeling stuck with something and wanting to get some coaching around that, um, feel free to call me or email me. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, Pam, I know you have a very strong background in um, marketing as well. 
to just run by ideas in terms of printed materials or brochures um, just with your expert eye? Is that something that would get forward on to you as well? Sure, absolutely. I'm happy to do that. I'm also happy to um, just brainstorm marketing strategy with you um, if you're interested in doing something like that. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so I'll go ahead and um, send this to all of you and feel free to contact me later if you have any other questions. Thanks. So I just want to open it up now for um, anyone who would like to share any challenges or best practices since our last meeting. So this is Adriana, and I know that Pam had mentioned this, but I thought I would bring it up as well, which is one of our challenges at Clark is that a lot of the students who are kind of having a difficult time in the nursing program are the ENL or ESL students. And so when the time I'm kind of working with them is they've started the program, they didn't do well, they're given one quarter of remediation to try to get back on track, and then they can reapply uh, to get back in the program. So they have kind of one quarter in between to try to be successful and prove that they're able to get back in the program. Adriana, you're cutting out. And on we my are degree. for mentors. We have a tutoring and writing center. We have a lot of workshops. Okay, with the audio too? Yeah, so um, my screen is stalled and I'm not getting your video or your audio right now. Are other people having the same problem? Putting in online as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Margaret, do you have any suggestions for how we might remedy that? Can everyone hear me? Mm -hmm. No, I don't because it's probably Adriana's internet connection. Okay. But Adriana, if you want to chat in the chat box, unless it's um, okay. <laughs> it's just not chattable. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, now I can hear you. Yeah, me too. Adriana, I think we have a... Uh, okay, now we you can, can hear me. You too. Oh. And, and there it goes. Gone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Adriana's yeah. question was that she's just wondering <laughs> if anyone else has any resources oh, so just in general, if anyone has, mm -hmm. for ESL or ENNL students. I'm also curious if there are other others in the group who um, whose students are having similar challenges. If you have quite a few non-native speakers of English, you know, is that is that something that the whole group would benefit from a a speaker on or if you would benefit from that, could you just type something in the chat box? Like yes. Yes. <laughs> so Natalie says, um, for our ELL students, if they get paired with a language partner to practice speaking medical terms with. Oh. Mm -hmm.
Um, and she also says they can also volunteer with CMAR to get basic experience where they can also practice with patients who speak their language. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And Adriana says we do have super mentors, which is similar, and volunteering is a good idea. Great, thank you, Natalie. Okay, so Adriana, this might be something that that we just follow up with um, mm -hmm. and work on together. Uh, and Adriana says, part of the difficulty is the critical thinking aspect that is required when a student enters nursing school. Um, so she's looking for critical thinking exercises. So if anyone has anything along those lines, um, please let Adriana know. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, great. Okay, does anyone ha else have anything they'd like to share around challenges or best practices? Eddie would have any uh, new strategies that you've tried for recruiting. I know we're going into uh, spring quarter here. Okay, well then I'm gonna go ahead and move on if no one has anything they'd like to share. Oh, it's a message from Natalie. Um, she says, we're starting monthly babysitting nights so students with kids can do labs in the evening. Great. Okay, so we just have a few minutes left. Um, I'd like to go to the next agenda item, with, which is something I'm, I would like to incor start incorporating into our monthly meeting. And it's just that everyone shares one item, one action item that you'll be committed to in the next month. So if you, I'm just gonna go ahead and call, call on people. Um, you can either, Type it in the chat box or um, speak it out. So, Adriana, do you have an action item you're committed to for the next month? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me at this point? Yes. So, for me, I am assisting in helping with our career service office. We have a career clothing closet and career days coming up. Uh, which are going to be available to the students and really beneficial to them. Great, thank you. And I'm not sure who call in user seven is. If you'd like to share something, please speak up now. Okay. Um, how about Jennifer? Jennifer, do you have an action item you'd like to share for the next month? Oh, I don't think she's on sound. Okay, let's go to Natalie. Jennifer, we're not hearing you. Maybe you'd like to just type in the chat pane. Oh. 
Okay. Um, Natalie, do you have anything to share? I see Natalie's typed in the chat pane. Oh, thank you. So Natalie said, putting the final touches on our health workshop for students to meet with employers. Great. And Jennifer's is, I'm working on piloting the new My, My Pocket Coach phone app. Hmm. Okay, who else is online here? Um, this is Shannon. Shannon. Hi, and I was inspired by Yvette's um, ideas in terms of connections. So I'm going to be reaching out to SHRM and the Office of the Compliance Programs and various boards. So see how many I can run through here in the next few days and weeks as we gear up towards um, our spring quarter. Great. Thanks, Shannon. Mm -hmm. And then I think, is Mary on from Spokane? Hi, Pam and everyone. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so I, I told Rob, I'm sitting here on the uh, SEC with Rob and Connie, and I said, where do I begin? Um, so I'm reaching out to the other colleges of um, in their veterans programs and some of their software developers to offer our K hymns um, and students that will be graduating soon. Um, and I'm also, and I think I mentioned maybe I didn't um, to the whole group, but we all I also participate in the veterans councils here. Uh, it's once a month, and we reach out to oh yeah, Connie and I. And we reach out to other veterans. And there's a lot of resources here in Spokane for um, the veterans. So in being the program is for veterans, uh, I spend a lot of time on those resources as well. We're also looking at job placement, looking into health care as far as we had a health care forum here to try to get some of our employers in and up to speed and what they're looking for in IT. So uh, I know you mentioned more, Rob, but I can't remember. That's a good start. That's okay. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Um, so our next meeting is um, Thursday, scheduled for Thursday, April 17th, and I'm actually going to be on vacation during that time. Um, so I'm wondering, um, is someone else willing to facilitate the meeting, or would you like to change that meeting to uh, – the, the following week. Um, any thoughts on that? Okay. So is anyone willing to facilitate the next meeting? Okay, well then I will just let you know. Um, <laughs> thanks, Heather. Okay, so I will then just get back to you and let you know um, when the next meeting will be and who will be facilitating it and we'll go from there. Um, thank you all for attending and look forward to talking to you all soon. And this ends the meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Pam.